What's up, crypto tubers? It is me, the cryptographic, coming at you uh, again. Now, I've been filming and screen recording Ghost Mode Episode 1 Windows setup pretty much for the last 24 hours, filming little bits and patching them together. And then this absolute piece of shite. Windows computer that I was using to film it has decided to to crap itself. And I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm going to start again with it, or maybe just run the walkthrough in a VM, or maybe just go through some of the steps and point you guys in the direction of some tutorials. Um, I don't know. Let me guys. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what you'd like to see, whether you actually want to see me go through stuff on the screen with it or whatnot, as I have been doing. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to talk to you guys about this news that's dropped about the vulnerability in 20 years worth of Intel CPUs. Um, there's uh, There are actually two vulnerabilities. One is affecting uh, mainly Intel CPUs. Uh, and the other one affects, seems to affect possibly Intel as well, but mostly AMD and ARM CPUs. ARM CPUs being um, a lot of the chips that are used in our mobiles and stuff like that. So uh, there is a site which I'll link down below, um, which details a bit of information about the vulnerabilities called meltdownattack.com. And it seems that uh, these attacks have actually been known to uh, the tech world, being you know Windows, Apple, um, and uh, sorry Microsoft, Apple, and uh, the Linux Foundation for for quite a while. So while it might feel like breaking news to us, I think it's we're just we're only just getting uh, getting news of it now. But they may have known for it for for a little bit longer, known about it for a little bit longer. It seems. So basically, the main thing that's going to affect most of us, and the main thing which a lot of us will have noticed has already affected a lot of the exchanges today. Um, a lot of them have been down for maintenance and stuff like that, as uh, as they will most likely be using Intel CPUs for their servers um, that store all the uh, store all the, the the information and stuff, and and run their their exchange websites so it's a bit of a worry as far as I'm aware uh, there are no known cases of people exploiting these vulnerabilities as yet although it seems that they're quite uh, hard to to catch and and they don't they don't seem to leave much information behind if even if you had been exposed so we're going to go through a little bit uh, about what they do um, meltdown, which is the one that that's mainly affecting Intel chips. Uh, so this is the main one that that people are worrying about today. This is the main one that exchanges will have been shutting down to try and patch over the CPUs uh, and operating systems. Sorry, uh, to to get it under control. So meltdown breaks the most fundamental isolation between user applications and the operating system. This attack allows a program to access the memory and thus also the secrets of other programs and the operating system. So if your computer has a vulnerable processor and runs an unpatched operating system, it is not safe to work with sensitive information without the chance of leaking the information. This applies both to personal computers as well as cloud infrastructure. Luckily, there are software patches against Meltdown. That's good to know, but I've been doing a bit of searching myself and it doesn't appear that... Uh, those, you know, home users like ourselves are going to be able to patch these things ourselves. Uh, there seems to be a patch already available for Linux that you might be able to do if you're running Linux-based systems, like my man Flick, um, called Kaiser, hiding the kernel from user space. Uh, and there's a link to that in the in the website that I'll link down below. Um, it looks like a pretty standard patching, sort of. Anyway, yeah, so I, 
as I said, it looks like this isn't something that we're going to be able to just go ahead and patch ourselves, uh, which means that we're going to have to pretty much just wait for 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 Apple uh, or Microsoft or whoever you use to to release a security update uh, uh, and a patch to fix it up. So. Um, I read somewhere, I believe it was on this site, that actually this thing was discovered, independently discovered and reported by three teams, Google, Cerberus, Graz University of Technology, and I read somewhere that it was actually in November last year that uh, Meltdown was first discovered, so it's a bit of a worry that it's been around for so long. Um, but basically, to explain a bit more what that actually means, so Meltdown breaks the most fundamental isolation between user applications and the operating system. This attack allows a program to access the memory and thus also the secrets of other programs and the operating system. So, access the memory and thus also the secrets of other, other programs. Basically, this, this uh, exploit would come into your system and act as an application, but it would have access to the other applications that were running on the system and any uh, information that those applications had stored in the operating system's memory. So, uh, pretty scary with a lot of us that have our passwords stored in our browsers um, or emails open, anything, photo apps open, whatever you might, you might have. Um, and as far as I can tell, the best way right now for us to mitigate the danger for this is going to be for you to probably use another browser that doesn't have all your passwords stored in it. I know this is a bit of a problem because it opens you up uh, to key loggers a bit more, but you might want to maybe even do your stuff through a, through a virtual machine for now until it's patched. I'm not sure uh, what lengths you want to go to. I don't have too much stuff stored on my computer anyway, at least not the same computer that I do most of my trading and stuff on. So I'm not too worried because there isn't too much um, sensitive information out there. But of course, you know, there's always stuff that you don't want um, malicious actors getting their hands on. So you want to maybe use a different browser that doesn't have all your passwords stored in it. Don't leave applications open with sensitive information. You probably, although this may be annoying, are going to want to close up your, your mail apps and uh, any other sort of uh, apps that have sensitive information, probably iMessage, uh, if you're on an iPhone, these these vulnerabilities are also in iPhones and iOS as well, uh, and in our, our mobiles as well. So pretty much everyone from the last 20 years is affected, is in danger. Here we go, can I detect if someone has employed a exploited Meltdown or Spectre against me? Probably not, the exploitation does not leave any traces in traditional log files. Uh, so, our proof of concept exploit can read the memory content of your computer. This may include passwords and sensitive data stored on the system. So, there are a couple of processes, Intel Itanium and Intel Atom processes released before 2013. Uh, we successfully tested Meltdown on Intel processor generations released as early as 2011. Currently, we have only verified Meltdown on Intel processors. At the moment, it is unclear whether ARM and AMD processors are also affected by Meltdown. So, uh, the one that, if you're running ARM or AMD processors, the one you're more likely going to be worried about is Spectre. Spectre breaks the isolation between different applications. It allows an attacker to trick error-free programs which follow best practices into leaking their secrets. In fact, the safety checks of said best practices actually increase the attack surface and may make applications more susceptible to Spectre. So this seems that it's going to be less of a worry um, and it's only targeting specific applications uh, which are called here error-free programs. So these applications are running a particular protocol to increase their security, and it's saying here that that is actually making them more susceptible and more vulnerable to this exploit. But they say here Spectre is harder to exploit than Meltdown, but it is also harder to mitigate. 
However, it is possible to prevent specific known exploits based on Spectre through software patches. Again, so software patches, this may mean individual applications you're going to want to be spec, you're going to want to be uh, uh, patching to mitigate against Spectre. That must be why they're saying it's harder to mitigate against it. Whereas Meltdown seems to just be an operating system patch. Um, so, yeah, I mean, don't keep too much stuff open. Don't keep any sensitive information open on your computer. Um, if possible, just remove it from your com computer completely for the time being. Uh, use something like a different browser that doesn't, if you have all your passwords stored in a browser or something like that, you want to maybe switch over to a browser that doesn't have all your passwords stored in it. Uh, and, you know, app, whether you run Apple or Windows or whatever it is, as soon as any security updates and operating system updates come in, uh, whether it's through the App Store or whether it's Windows doing its annoying Windows thing, or it just will probably automatically update itself anyway, um, unless you've gone into the, the system registry and, and, and changed all that. Um, so, but with Mac, you will have to okay the update probably from, from the App Store. So when you see something related to the operating system in the App Store, or you see that little one in the App Store with an update ready, get onto a quick smart while this thing's uh, lurking in the shadows just to make sure you're all covered. All right, guys? So sorry about the further delays on Ghost Mode Episode 1. Believe me, I'm more pissed off than anyone, especially after the work that I've put into it. Um, let me know if... If you guys want me just to go through maybe a, just a basic, you know, walkthrough of all the information and point you guys in the right direction of, of things you need to be looking to do uh, in setting up a Windows rig. As I said, the reason I chose Windows for episode one was because although we know that Windows is very vulnerable, the most vulnerable operating system out there, um, still most people are using Windows or uh, as we like to call it, wind blows. So uh, it's very common. A lot of people are using it, and I just figured for that reason that it might be a good one to start start ghost mode off in. Um, so apart from that, I'm going to link this, uh, this website down in the bottom for you to have a little look and learn a little bit more about these vulnerabilities. For those of you who are a bit more tech-minded, there are, there are actually specific technical papers in here for you to read a bit more detail about them and that kind of thing, but uh, stay safe guys, um, this explains all the sort of action we've had with the exchanges being down today and whatnot, um, so good to know they're, they're all getting on top of it, and uh, hopefully everybody comes out clean, so I'll see you guys soon, peace and love, JJ, Cryptographic, see you later.